to Midwest Gaming Classic 2013. Yeah. By show of hands, how many are Midwest Gaming Classic veterans? Thank you, thank you for coming back. And by round of applause, how many are Midwest Gaming Classic virgins? Thank you for coming. <laughs> wow, we're, we're going to be like that today, are we? <laughs> All right. This first presentation we're really excited about because, like you first timers, it has never been to a show before. It has never been out of the wrapper before. <laughs> the people from Hyperkin have a brand new product. And we have David Yu. One of the product developers is going to tell you all about it. David, take it away. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us in our presentation of the Retron 4. My name is David Yu, and I'm the marketing director for Hyperkin. I'm sure all of you guys are here to be very excited and eager to see what we have in store for you with the Retron 4. To be honest with you, we couldn't wait to show you guys the all new game user interface which we created from the ground up specifically for the Retron 4. We did our best not to spill our beans on the audio interpolation and the upcoming version that we'll be able to use via our new chipsets and then HDMI output. We're going to show you all the new Bluetooth wireless controllers. But this is not the presentation that you're going to see today. Recently we found out during development that we uh, were able to incorporate one more cartridge slot without hindering our developmental cycle. As a result, today, for the first time, we'll be showing all of you the Retron 5. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the fifth slot in mention that we're gonna add into this new system is the Famicom system. And the reason for this is to allow all the retro enthusiasts all over the world to be able to play their favorite games. So what makes the Retron 5 unique from our previous systems? We have created an all new chipset that makes region locks and compatibility no longer an issue. Now, you'll be able to play both your PAL and NTSC games on all on one console. CIC lockout chip, no problem. FX chip, no problem. Basically, the Retron 5 will have five cartridge slots, which will allow you to play your original NES, SNES, Genesis, Famicom, and Game Boy Advance games. On top of all this, you'll also be able to play your Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy cartridges as well. You guys will also be able to use your original controllers for each system, and we'll have a total of six controller ports, three on each side. Users will also be able to use any controller they desire for any system. That means if you want to use an SNES controller to play your Genesis games, you'll be able to do that. On the front of the console, along with a power up button to power up the console obviously, there is a sync button which will allow users to sync up up to four wireless controllers to one console. This means that if you have four wireless controllers, you'll be, you'll be able to play multiplayer compatible titles without the use of a multi-tap. On the rear of the console, you'll see that there is a standard AV output, a USB port to allow for charging of the uh, wireless controllers, an AC adapter to power up the system, and an HDMI output allow, to allow for HDTV connectivity. Here is our Bluetooth wireless controller. The controllers of the Retron 5 will not only support Bluetooth technology, but it will allow for a playable distance of up to 15 feet without losing sync from the console. 
Instead of a traditional D-pad, the wireless controllers will now utilize a micro-switch directional pad. There will also be six face buttons, two shoulder buttons, a start, a select button, and four LED light indicators that will denote to each player what the user is. Also, there will be a home button, which will not only sync the controller to any Retron 5, but will also allow users to access the game user interface at any point during gameplay. Every controller will have a rechargeable lithium iron battery that can be charged through any USB port via a micro USB cable. When you power on the Retron 5 for the first time, you will notice like the Xbox and the PlayStation, that the users will be taken to a digital user interface. Now, what this means that is that we've created a whole new system menu that allow users to select which systems they would like to play, as well as access features that we felt were very important to gamers. Most games, you know, as you know, will not allow you to save your games at any time during gameplay. This is obvious because, you know, back in the day, we used to play our favorite games, and then when our mom would call, or we have some other chores to do, we would have to pause the game and leave the system on. And there is the potential for you to be able to lose your place in the game. Well, the Retron 5 will allow users to save their games at any point during gameplay. And this, it'll also feature an autosave feature upon shutdown, which will allow users to pick up at any time where they left off at any point. When we plug in our original consoles to our brand new HDTVs, the video image looks very fuzzy, distorted, and quite frankly, really butt ugly. To combat this issue, the Retron 5 will upconvert video signals to show clearer and cleaner images up to a resolution output of 720p. So you no longer have to resort to playing on your old standard definition televisions. Users will also be given the option to select the aspect ratio in the our game user interface from a standard 4 to 3 to a HD ratio of 6 to 6 by 19, 16 by 9. Our goal is to fill up as much of the screen as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. We felt the need to make improvements on overall sound output. This is where the Retron 5 will utilize audio interpolation, a method of making digital sound better than it really is, resulting in a smoother, cleaner audio output. Here's a brief dem demonstration on how the Retron 5 will handle audio interpolation. I guess we didn't hook up the sound, so later on when you guys uh, come to our presentation area, I'll be able to show you exactly how this sounds, because just, just trust me, it sounds, sounds really good. <laughs> but as, sorry? Thank you. <laughs> Right. As you can see, as a sound wave enters the uh, audio analog to digital converter, samples are taken at time intervals. The portions in white are original samples that are taken from the cartridge. The pink portions of the sound wave is the audio interpolation actually working, adding new samples in between the original samples. As a result, the Retron 5 will produce a smoother, clearer audio output than that of the original systems. Users will also be able to program the controller to assign the buttons to their preference. In turn, the Retron 5 will allow you uh, will save these custom layouts so that users will not have to constantly reconfigure their button configuration. This feature will also be available to people wanting to remap their buttons on all their original controllers as well. It is no secret that there are a lot of older games that have parts that are really slow and tedious. The Retron 5 will allow for manual and passive overclocking, giving the users the ability to speed up or slow up their games as they see fit. The option will be available on our game user interface, and users will have the ability to access this at any time during gameplay. 
by utilizing the home button on the controller. Also, they'll be also be able to uh, utilize this by the macro buttons that are available on the controller as well. In conclusion, this is actually all the information that we have that we can share with you at this point. As you can see, we have a great amount of work ahead of us. However, we are even more determined to create a final product that will make the Retron 5 the definitive, the definitive console in the retro, retro market, rivaled by no other. We ask for your continued support and invite all of you to give us your suggestions or feedback via Facebook or Twitter. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and I will now open the floor to any questions that you may have. And if you have any more further technical questions, you can come visit us in room 171. We'll open it up at one o'clock later today, and we'll be happy to answer any questions or inquiries that you might have. Thank you. Sorry, I was a little nervous. Uh, but uh, hopefully it came out pretty well. <laughs> um, I'm gonna actually invite one of my colleagues to help out with the question session. So if you guys have any questions, you can just raise your hand and I'll call on you. How much is Retron 5 from the console? The Retron 5, at this point, we don't have a price point at this moment, but I will say that it'll be under at least $100. <laughs> any plans to add this you are not the first person to ask that question. We are currently looking into that at the moment, but at the same time, our company policy is such that we do not say anything or comment on anything until we have something definitive to say. But we will say, we have definitely looked into it for a long time now. And since we put that What do you got uh, we currently don't have a release date at the moment, and the reason why we want to do this is we want to have give our developers ample time to make this a perfect system. There's a lot of things that we have to do to make sure that the system is up to par to our standards. And if we did give a release date and we didn't miss, we missed it, then we have a lot of people who are disappointed. So in a later date, when we have we're in final production, at that point we will release a final release date. Probably sometime after June. Do you have a beta model that we can try out in the, in the room later? Yes, we have a, well, it's actually an alpha model that we have. It's a working system where you'll be able to play Street Fighter Alpha 2. But I don't know what question Okay. Yes? Uh, so you've got both the 3D chips working on the SNES games and the, the Mega Drive, so you can play like Mature Racing and Star Fox and all that. Is that all? Yes. Yeah? Cool. Yes. Will a USB port allow for uh, system firmware updates for compatibility issues? Uh, the question was regarding firmware updates. Uh, I won't tell you how the system will update. We haven't made that distinction yet. But we tell you, yes, there will be firmware updates. Although at the moment, the USB port is only guaranteed to charge the wireless controller. Yeah, have you thought about um, adding that's a marketing decision for a high-level executive beyond ourselves. The question was, were we ever going to support some of the other systems available in the market, the Amigas, the Ataris, and stuff like that? If the market grows to the point where we can, then we absolutely will. Uh, do you have any sort of upscaling, like HQ4X, built into the graphics? I guess that's a question for me. I have no idea what HT4X is, okay. but as far as upscaling goes, we're going to put out the best possible picture that the CPU okay. can provide. That's all I can say at this point. Yeah, um, on some uh, HDTV some uh, HDTV channels, they have been more lagging than others. Uh, is that the same thing? How much? On the old game systems, if the game system decides to output something with video for it, it would appear on the camera of Ray 2 and a microseconds. Whereas the uh, on newer systems, there tends to be a bit more processing that goes into sharing. Is there any way to uh, have a closely my system that has to say to the TV to display this as fast as possible for whatever? Okay, the question was regarding lag. As far as the technical side goes, I won't go into details, but I will say, as someone who plays video games myself, if you're playing any game that has any amount of lag from controller to system to television, that's unacceptable. And Hypergen wouldn't accept that. Not in the final product. Thank you. 
put a, a PAL game in that's like 50 hertz, can you set the system to 60 hertz so it runs to the proper speed? As it is right now, we understand there is a hertz rating, so they do run at different speeds. So if you put in something like a Paradigma, it would work immediately. Although at this point, we're looking at making an auto detector settings. And absolutely, yes, we want games to run at the right speed and the right audio. All of that really matters to gameplay. Um, can you plug a 32X into the Mega Drive 4? I'm afraid 32X is just a little bit outside our reach at this point. And I'm afraid not. So those 40 games that you really like, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was a question regarding light guns. The issue of light guns is not related to the system. It's related to your television. Modern televisions have a refresh rate way too fast for a light gun to recognize. So unfortunately, there's just nothing we can do about that. Uh, software compatibility, is there any issues with numbers and compatibility? Or is there going to be some games that... Just repeat the question one more time. I'm sorry. Software compatibility. Because I know there's some games that work, don't work on some NES on chips or something like that. Um, like I mentioned before, we're aiming for 100% compatibility. And in order to do these kind of things, we're actually actively, we've recruited a lot of uh, key members in the retro gaming community to assist us in beta testing our console to ensure that we have 100% compatibility. Uh, further to that, there's actually a little bit more we can do on that end. If you play a game like, let's say, Mega Man 3, there's a bit of slowdown in certain areas. Even those can actually be fine-tuned to work perfectly, unlike on the original console. How do you find suspects for your games? Well, that's a question that a lot of people have asked us through Facebook and through my email inbox. Is, Currently at the moment, we actually have already designated people to be our testers at the moment. But there is a possibility in the future that we might seek out other people that we feel that might assist us, like best assist us to uh, test out our console. Uh, towards that end, we actually are looking for a Famicom beta tester right now. Yeah, so if you are a large owner of a large Famicom collection, please come see us and we'll see what we can do from that point. Are there any more questions? So you can save the state at any point in the game and switch off and just come straight back into the, into the game, right? Yes, you can save the game at any point during the game. And as well as when you shut the system down, it'll automatically save your game as well. And how much, how much like, flash RAM have you got? How many games can you, how many save states can you? Store in the console. As far as memory size goes, um, these older software titles don't take much to put up a safe state. I don't think there's going to be any capacity issues. And there will be a way to take your saves away from the system. You'll have the option of saving to the cartridge, saving to the system, or saving to an external memory device. Yes? Yeah, if you wiggle it or if it loses a connection, you, yeah, I, I, I totally relate to that. Um, we are actually working toward to ensure that, you know, even, you know, a slight movement wouldn't hinder those kind of things. However, obviously, if you drop the console, you kick it, or, you know, your girlfriend or your wife, or, you know, decides to just bump it off, you know, obviously, it'll lose connections then, but we're making every effort to ensure that we secure the console in place, we cut the cartridge in place. Yeah, no doubt. Any further questions? Uh, like I said before, you can join us at 1 p.m. at room 171 in the presentation area. And you can actually check out and take a look at the uh, Retron 5 in action. Thank you very much for uh, your support, and I'll see you guys later.